We got Reno Mockery back. Hello, Reno. Hello. Yeah, what happened? Oh, well, apparently the technology didn't allow us to uh, have Mr. Gidi and you at the same time to work at the same speed. But we, we did get a lot oh, from him okay. also too. Uh, okay. So um, you help us fill us on the Mr. Gidi part because he cannot rejoin us on Skype. But um, a, a great point uh, Mr. Gidi asked, which I a question he asked, which I think uh, part of what you were responding to on um, the L five thing. Help, help us give, give us some clarity. People say that the responsibility in ending this violence in Kaduna falls squarely on the hands of those who have been elected, that they are falling short. Why is it difficult, you think, to help for people, not just with these ones that have happened now, he traces it back to what has happened in Kafanchan in the 80s, uh, Zango Kataf in early 90s, and, you know, um, early 2000s, where the violence also happened in southern Kaduna. Why does it appear political actors are lame to put an end to this urge of violence that keeps reoccurring in southern Kaduna? Well, I said it before. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, before Nasir Erufai became the governor, they had a governor in Kaduna by name, uh, Yamaran, uh, um, Yamalan Nero. Mm. And they, we didn't have this crisis under him. Mm. Now, why is it that we have this crisis under Nasir Erufai? And not just that we have this crisis, I mean, with this quantum of killings. Mm. It's because, and I said it before, Nasir Al-Rufai made promises. He made promises. And I read the promises out to your followers. And I mean, if you want me to read it again, mm. I'll read it again. Mm. He had made promises that he was going to revenge uh, the killings of the Fulanis. Now, you recall, under former President Jonathan, mm. uh, headsmen were killing people in uh, Plato State. If you remember, the, you had the Dogo Nahawa, mm. where you had about 580 people were killed. Mm. And then there were some also, also killings in other parts of Plato State. Mm. And then the then president sent the Nigerian army there mm. to try to put an end to, the, to those killings. Mm. Now, on mm. the day the Nigerian army went there, mm. Nasir El Rufai had made a promise. He said, we will write this for all to read. Anyone, soldier or not, that mm. kills the Fulani mm. takes a loan, repayable one day, no matter mm. how long it takes. Mm. Now, that's a promise that he made, a vow. Now, that loan is mm. being repaid today. Mm. And you can see, even his comments subsequently mm. have shown his bias against Christians. Mm. For example, he accused Christians of being behind Boko Haram. Now, you and I know that that's ridiculous. Mm. But he said it in the part in, when he gave testimony at Kotikuli House in Parliament. He also mm. tweeted about, uh, about it. Mm. Now, this was a man during his campaign, and I told, I mean, said it before, mm. but I'm going to read it again. I'm quoting him during his campaign. He said, mm. even if the Pope is my my running mate, mm. Christians won't vote for me. Mm. So he has already shown bias, animosity. Mm. So, you know, so yeah, Christians. yeah. So, so right. So, Renu, you think his recent actions, for example, um, put uh, the curfew imposed on uh, four local government areas, the number of state broadcast. I know the military also did uh, were deployed in certain parts of southern Kaduna. You think that's not enough to change the mindset of people over these long years of feelings of intimidation? Because this, this thing you say, when I speak to many leaders in southern Kaduna, they talk about this um, uh, uh, marginalization, years of harassment, intimidation, and all of that. You think, even if Nasser Rufai tries to correct some of these wrongs that certain actions is taking now, it won't change the minds of people in southern Kaduna? But listen, look, I, you know, I did it fast, and you're very, I mean, you're aware of that. I did it fast. I'm a number one best selling author because of facts. My book is titled Facts versus Fiction. Nasir El Rufai has sent soldiers there. Now, these soldiers that have been sent to South Africa, how many headsmen have they arrested? Not one. Mm. How many headsmen have they tried, charged, imprisoned? Not one. Mm. What happened? They declared a coffee. Mm. Now, the South Africa Christians are caught up in the coffee. Mm. How come? The headsmen are able to go from town to town, mm. attacking, burning, and killing. Mm. Now you think about it. If there's really a curfew, how come? Where are they getting the arms from? Mm. As I speak to you today, and um, one of their one of their representatives was on TV. Mm. The people who are in prison, who are in police cells, mm. are the Southern Kaduna people. The people who are being who are being killed. Mm. I mean, yesterday. I had to make a donation of half a million naira to these people. It's not because I'm made out of money, mm. but just because I saw the killings. I saw there, there are people right now in Southern Kaduna who mm. are sleeping out in the open. Mm. Snakes are biting them, mm. mosquitoes are biting them. These are children. Mm. They are starving. They have no food. Mm. What is the government doing? Mm. And then we have this man who has been making these provocative comments, showing his bias against Muslims. I'm mm. uh, sorry, against Muslims. So sending soldiers there. I mean, it, it, it doesn't make any sense except the soldiers are arresting the aggressors. Mm.
And, and this, this is a big conversation we will have over and over again about how to end the violence happening now, which is, which is paramount. Whether the Christians or Muslims or anyone who's been killed, every life is important, fortunately, and people have been killed. Um, when we take one action now, hoping that this short-term action, and it's not just with this Aerofice government, I found it happened, they sent in the military to Zango Kataf, they sent in the military in the 90s, they sent in the military in 2000 during the Sharia riots. We sort of forget about the future. I remember the 2014 CONFAB. One of the highlights of this, uh, the Kaduna, uh, uh, Southern Kaduna situation was that they be given a state to resolve it. Well, see, the, the, the thing about the Southern Kaduna uh, conflict is this. We're talking about the leadership. No, you keep going to Kafanshan and Zangu Katab. Kafanshan and Zangu Katab, that was in 1989. Hmm. From 1989 up until 2000, you didn't have this crisis. What happened in 2000 was not uh, this crisis. You're mixing things up. What happened in 2000 was because in Zampara State, Sani Yariman had Good. declared Sharia. Yeah. And so Sharia was spreading all over northern Nigeria. And then mm. in the Kwajadapa axis, which right. starts from Zulu in Kebi State mm. all the way mm. to um, Adamawa State, there was fear among the Christian minorities in the north. That was a completely different issue. Mm. Now, after 2000, you had governors, you had, uh, um, um, you had a Christian governor, mm. If you recall, right, and then you had Ramalan Yero, mm -hmm. so you've had, and you had three a, a Markafi. Yep. And, yeah, Good. and then you did not have this crisis. This crisis is a different crisis. This crisis is Fulani headsmen killing Southern no. Kaduna Christians no. because they feel that. They are in power. No. They feel uh, that the government supports them. So, the so, so, Reno, so yeah, sorry to interrupt, Reno, but it, it's a convoluted issue. So, when I speak even to Southern Kaduna leaders, you know, people like uh, Elafia Obadia, who was a former presidential candidate, they point out a number of issues which have been brought into this. They bring up the issue also, too, of the things that happened in the past where the white paper report on these things were never implemented. So they say that the bias has been towards them because if they were serious for a long-term solution to these problems, then all the administrations would have made sure that the reports that were put in place, the actions were followed through, but it was never followed through. So they've brought in all of these issues about the politics and everything together with the militias that are operating in Southern Kaduna. So that's the point I was trying to make. That's, well, that's not, very, that's not uh, true because, you know, I was a presidential spokesman, so I'm privy to those white papers. One of the things that the white paper said is that so that this crisis will not occur, there should be balance in Kaduna State. And when they're talking about balance, mm. they say like the governor should be either a Christian or a Muslim, Good. and then the deputy governor must be from the other side. Good. Now, we had that in 1999 to, to, to 2007, mm. when you had the former governor there. Right. You also had that from 2007 to 2015, right. when you had a Christian governor, and then you also had Ramalan Yero. Right. Now, this is the...